what about the utility of the data? We had an article in Data and Knowledge Engineering a couple of years back that looked at this, and it was interesting because uh, it, there, there was not even a clear understanding of what it meant for data to be good and useful after it was anonymized. There were some metrics people had, but they didn't seem to tie very well to actually trying to learn something from the data. And the third problem is efficient. How do we do this efficiently? It turns out that for the general problem of even k-anonymization is NP-hard, unless you place some fairly strong restrictions on how you can anonymize. Okay, so let's look at a simpler type of, of adversary. Typically in some, something like canonymity, we've been saying we know the individual is in the data set. We want to identify which individual it is. Uh, we're going to look at just a simple case of you don't know if an individual or not, is in the data set or not, and you just want to determine are they in the data set. We don't even necessarily need to identify which record they belong to. It turns out if you, you can think of this similar to the other problem by saying, well, I'll take each sensitive value and make it a different data set and say, are they in that sensitive data set? So these are all quite related. But it, just taking this very simple problem will make the rest of the discussion easier. OK. Canonymity provides some protection in all of these views, but not perfect. Uh, some of the extensions, well, what we're going to look at today is delta presence, which just handles this is an item in the data set, but looks at this in a very new way, looks at what is the risk associated with learning that someone's in the data set, and how sure you are that they are in the data set, and enables us to come up with new ways for anonymization. So this work came out in Sigmod 2007. It's this simple model. Uh, the way you interpret this is the increased risk of disclosure. The adversary already has some knowledge. They know uh, my name, my birth date, my zip code. Uh, I make this data available. How much more do they learn uh, in terms of identifying whether or not I'm in that data set? And we've even, we can even work this out where you can talk about a bridge between what would the harm done to me be? Uh, you know, perhaps I could measure it, that harm in a dollars and cents cost. We can then convert that and say, how much do you have to anonymize the data to keep that harm below a certain level? And it may be different for different individuals. So here's a specific example of this. Say we have a database of diabetes uh, uh, sufferers. And we would like to produce anonymized data set for research. It has lots of details on individuals who are at risk for diabetes. Problem is, if we disclose this, well, insurance companies probably would not want to insure these people because diabetes is an ex treating diabetes is expensive and an expensive ongoing treatment. There's a known treatment cost. The insurance company can look at this and say this is how much it's going to cost or how much they expect it to cost. So what we want is a probability of identification that if someone is in that data set, uh, the probability that, I, that an insurance company would be able to figure that out, or their estimate of the likelihood that I'm in the data set, would be sufficiently low that their expected cost would be noise. It wouldn't be enough that they would, would want to worry about it. And we want to do this on a per individual basis. So when I say per individual basis, uh, 
different individuals, the insurance company may already know things that put them at a different risk for diabetes or, or a different expected cost. Or different individuals may need different levels of anonymization. For me, the year of birth and my zip code may be enough or you know, may be enough that they can identify as well with a 10% probability that's Chris. Whereas for a Purdue student, you know, that may, you know, year of birth, well, there's a lot of people born in the same year, uh, most of the people in their class, and so the estimate may drop way down. And you could say, well, for those people, we can say month and year. So what delta presence does is it's a definition that says privacy is preserved if the probability that someone appears, or, or the, the probability that an adversary's estimate of the probability that someone appears in this data set is between some upper and lower bound, you know, between delta max and delta min. Now, why do you want to have both an upper and a lower bound? I mean, you could say, well, you know, with at most 5% probability, you're in this data set. Uh, that sounds good, but what's, what's the harm in saying, well, I can say for certain you aren't in this diabetes data set? Well, as an insurance company, I'll just go out and say, I'm going to insure everybody whose probability of being in the data set is zero, and that'll give me more customers than I need, so that, you know, that's enough. So you may want to say, well, there's also a possibility that anybody could be in that data set. Now, the key, the adversary knows this public information. They see the anonymized data set, and they have their estimate that an individual, any given individual is in that data set has to be within these bounds. If so, you've met the delta presence standard. So, you know, here's an example of a, uh, of a data set where we have some publicly known data. And in this, we just put for illustration purposes whether that's someone that's in the, the data set. And right now, you can see it's pretty easy to match people up. We want to anonymize T to the point where someone who has P wouldn't be able to figure out if they're, if they're in that data set T. Okay. So first, what are good values for delta? Well, there's, if I said, you know, diabetes costs 10,000 a year to treat, and if an insurer has an expected cost of you know, of a, or, or if it's expected cost of a hundred dollars a year or less, they're not going to worry about it because, you know, their their expected profit's going to cover that. What would you say I should be setting delta as? The the probability that you could figure out that someone is in this data set, the, the likelihood they're in the data set. What would be your first guess on on the way to set that? So you've got hundred thousand or ten thousand dollars is the cost. A hundred is the expected cost that's acceptable. Well, what's a hundred divided by ten thousand? It's one percent, right? Yeah. So I, I come up with one percent. But that doesn't work out. If if I say what is the cost that someone or what is the likelihood that someone is either diabetic or at risk for diabetes? If I didn't know anything about you, what do you think I would say your risk is, your probability of being at risk for that disease is? Well, I'd say around 7% because that's the incidence of it occurring in the general population. So already that estimate's around 7%, so saying someone's in the you know, the likelihood someone's in the database is only 1%, actually 